Earth Moments and Seasons Changing Seasons Let us try to understand why seasons happen, why we have some parts that are warm and some cold and why are seasons opposed in the northern and southern hemispheres. 1. The spherical shape of the earth and the curvature of its surface. 2. Daily rotation of the earth on its own axis. 3. The tilt of the axis of rotation compared to the plane on which the earth moves. 4. The earth's movement around the sun. Rotation Earth moves around its own axis from west to east at a speed of 16-10 km per hour. The movement is called rotation. Axis An imaginary line which connects the North Pole and South Pole through the center of the Earth is called the axis. Effects of Earth Rotation Day and night are caused due to the Earth's rotation. When the Earth moves around its axis, only half the portion of it receives sun rays and therefore it appears bright, other half remains in darkness. It takes 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4.9 seconds, that is, one day for the Earth to complete one rotation. Revolution the Earth also moves around the Sun while around its axis. This movement is called revolution. The Earth goes around the Sun on a regular path on a level plane in open space called orbital plane. The orbit is elliptical in shape. The length of the Earth's orbit is 965 million kilometers. Earth takes 365 days and 5.56 hours for a revolution. As Earth revolves around the Sun, Earth's axis remains tilted in the same direction throughout the year. It keeps pointing to the pole star which can be seen in the northern sky in the night and this is called the polarity of axis. Effects of Revolution Revolution causes variations in day and night, durations and seasons. As the Earth's orbit path is elliptical in shape, the distance between the Earth and the Sun is not constant. The farthest position of the Earth is known as the aphelion. The closest position of the Earth is known as the perihelion. Reasons for Seasons During some months, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, while the some months, the southern hemisphere faces the sun. As a result, when the northern hemisphere has summer, southern hemisphere has its winter. The angle keeps increasing as moved towards the two poles. As a result, it is hotter in the areas which face the sun directly and less hot in the areas that receive the sun rays at an angle. Various Positions The rays of the sun strike vertically overhead on different latitudes when the earth is in various positions. March 21st on the equator, June 21st on the Tropic of Cancer, September 23rd on the equator, December 22nd on the Tropic of Capricorn. Sun appears vertically overhead at noon on the equator on March 21st and September 23rd. The length of the day and nights are equal all over the world on these two days. Hence, two days are known as equinoxes. As we move northwards or southwards of the tropical belt, we reach a region where it gets warm in summers but also very cold in winters. This is temperate zone. The northern portions of this region get snowfall in winter. Arctic Ocean The Arctic Ocean remains frozen throughout the year. So cold that the soil becomes frozen like a hard rock and roots of trees can't penetrate them. So trees just can't grow in this region. Arctic Ocean 
approximate calculation of years. The axis of the Earth is an imaginary line on which the Earth rotates. It links up the two poles. Both the axis and the Earth are tilted at an angle of 23 and a half degrees during a revolution. The tilting of the axis results in direct sunlight falling on different places during different seasons. This causes variations in the duration of days, nights and seasons. Relationship between the location of the overhead sun and the seasons. Similarly, the revolution of the earth and the tilting of the axis results in different angle of the sun during different periods. When the sun is directly overhead, we call this the overhead sun. At this time, the Earth's surface and the midday sun forms a 90 degree angle. Different locations of the overhead sun results in variations in the amount of solar radiation received in different areas and at different periods. Spring Equinox on the 21st or 22nd of March The overhead sun is over the equator. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the northern hemisphere is in the spring equinox, while the southern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is spring in the northern hemisphere, where the day is longer than the night. In the southern hemisphere, it becomes autumn, when the day is shorter than the night. Summer Solstice On the 21st or 22nd of June, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Cancer. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. At this time, the Northern Hemisphere is in the Summer Solstice, while the Southern Hemisphere is in the Winter Solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime of the northern hemisphere is the longest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the shortest in the year. Besides, there are 24 hours of daylight at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of darkness at the Antarctic Circle. Autumn Equinox On the 22nd or 23rd of September, the overhead sun is over the equator again. The equator receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the autumn equinox while the Southern Hemisphere is in the Spring Equinox. The angle of the Sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the two hemispheres receive a similar amount of solar radiation, and the length of day and night is the same at all places on the Earth. After this day, it is autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, where the day is shorter than the night. In the Southern Hemisphere, it becomes spring, when the day is longer than the night. Winter Solstice 
On the 21st and 22nd of December, the overhead sun is over the Tropic of Capricorn. It receives the largest amount of solar radiation. On this day, the northern hemisphere is in the winter solstice, while the southern hemisphere is in the summer solstice. The angle of the sun decreases towards the poles. On this day, the length of daytime in the northern hemisphere is the shortest in the year, while that of the southern hemisphere is the longest in the year. There are 24 hours of darkness at the Arctic Circle and 24 hours of daylight at the Antarctic Circle.